trying again. Is this working? Can you hear me? Hi there, can you hear me? Hello Rose, hello Tracy. Yes, you can, that's fantastic. Oh, brilliant, I've got a, a message from Marianne Ray. I'm just, okay, right. Oh, five past, do you know what? That's great. Um, I only got here uh, on time by pure chance. I had to go to the post office to post a load of stuff and I bumped into somebody and then, um, and then I went into the post office and Ildi in the village post office is great but she takes a fairly leisurely approach to things. Um, anyway, so I got out and I got home uh, no, I forgot, I bumped into somebody else and she is a terrific talker and um, and I said, I'm going to have to go because I do a live video at 12. Oh, yes, yeah, she said, and you'll have to get yourself spruced up. And I have to say, I gave her a little bit of a sort of, a little bit of a sort of, what the hell do you mean, look, and got in my car and drove home. So, oh, Jane, Jane. Um, Dungate, I was just suggesting that Julie Nixon maybe give Rory a ring because she's a bit worried about her wrist. And I said, oh, Rory's lovely. Anyway, he won't, probably won't thank me for that. Anyway, right, so since we were here yesterday, I opened the group, the Lockdown Gang. Now, anybody of you who is not already a member of the Lock... No, it's not the, it's lockdown gang it's a group on facebook um could you please do these in your pjs you could do these in your pjs i don't wear pjs annaline so that's not gonna happen i wear a very slinky i like to post honestly i wear a slinky nighty and just fight off the advances um where was i yeah yes the lo lockdown gang the facebook group lockdown gang this is a place where you can put your masterpieces, your disasters, your iPad wrote, let me watch you so on the phone. Hi, Sarah. Uh, your, and if, you, if you're too shy to put your own paintings on lockdown group, gang group, uh, just message them to me and I'll put them up and then you can just sit back and wait for all the adulation. But it's not about adulation. We have got some amazing painters, uh, but it's not about that. It's just about sharing a love for painting and for looking at paintings and an interest in, you know, just how you interpret things. So please, please do not be put off because it's lovely being part of a group. I'm, I'm in two or three groups that I just love. One of them is a swimming group. Uh, and I'm in two swimming groups. One of them is a little bit serious and one of them is not so serious. And I mostly put things on the not so serious group. So, oh Sue, don't form a mental image. Hello Karen and hello William. William, I would quite like to see what you're doing. And if you're too shy to put your pictures on lockdown group yourself, message them to me and I'll put them there. And I'm sure whatever you do will be lovely. Right, anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to um, I'm going to finish. Do you remember yesterday's pheasant? I did a little bit more and I think it's very, very nearly finished. And I'm just going to do a tiny little bit to these leaves. He'll let you off. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll finish this and then I'm going to do a little bit more to my, my big painting. And look, I've added a big cock. And I think that balances quite well now. So I'll put that underneath. Oh, Lordy. Try not to make a mess on it because, oh, crikey, one of my, that nearly went over the edge. Put that there and I'll find a scrap somewhere. Sorry, 
I just need something to protect that big painting from this one. Love the trick painting, thank you very much. Big cocks, yes, Margaret, very big cocks. Um, I'm gonna tip you up now. Now, Marianne Ray will send me a message if I do this, or if I do this, paint on something out of the way. So I'm relying on you. She'll just send me a message on my other phone. Oh God, she's vanished, never mind. Right, I'm gonna tip you up and start today. The thing is, I'm doing it on Fikey's phone and it is really so small, big, so small that I can't really, I could be like pressing on and chatting and painting and uh, not know that you can't see a single thing I'm doing. That's hardly right, hello. Right. Stay in shot or else. Charles McGowan, hello Charles McGowan, how are you? How nice to have you join us today. Um, right. So I'm going to bring some poppy colour. When I say poppy colour, it's like colour that pops. To put on the, uh, like the stalks of these ridiculous heart shaped. Crikey, you have staff now. Me too. Remind you, time and team are in ready to do your roots and to remind you, roots and paper. Hello, Neil Fox. Oh, golly. Bet that's Paul. I'm not going to answer it. I'd quite like to add a bit of red to that and make it brighter. I don't really like that. Well, whoever it was didn't leave a message. Yes. I, everything would have happened in better time this morning. Ah, oh, great, Charles. Lovely to see you. Hello, Julie. Um, if my mum, who is 86 this month and would kill me for telling you all that, hadn't rung up. She's, she's doing a Zoom meeting this evening with, because uh, she's a piano teacher, she still has some pupils as well, though I do feel sorry for them for two reasons. One, she's never understood that eating garlic and onion is quite offensive to other people. And when you're teaching the piano, you are obviously sitting very, very close to them. I mean, we're eating loads of garlic at the moment, but that's because, um, you know, nobody is going to say, oh, what's that dreadful nif, Marianne, stop eating garlic. That's the one thing. Also, the second thing, she's as deaf as a ruddy post. Anyway, that's beside the point. She's having a Zoom meeting tonight with some of her fellow teachers. So I think you know where this is going. So she rings me up. My, my brother is actually, um, he is staying. My brother, who lives in London normally, is staying with my mother in Gosforth. So um, that's great. He keeps her fed and watered and exercised, but he is, he doesn't have the most patience and he is genuinely sick to death of answering her problems about that ring would frighten the pheasants. I know it would. Hi, Anessa, how are you? Um, yeah, so my poor mum is absolutely hopeless. And as she says, you can explain to her how to do something on her uh, iPad. And then within about three and a half minutes, she's completely forgotten it. So anyway, she wants to do this Zoom meeting and she rang me up and said uh, that she wanted to do it. And she had a thing on an email. Um, and I went, right, that's fine. I can help you, mum. So I said, can you get your tab, can you get your iPad and is it charged up? And what we need to do is we need to download the Zoom app and um, and she's already interrupting me. And I'm already finding myself wanting to say, why don't you just shut up and do exactly what I tell you? And then I thought that wouldn't be really very polite. I'm just using this, um, this is like the Tharlow Blue, I think you call it. Um, just 
just to kind of create a little tiny bit of depth in between these leaves. And can you see I put an, like an earthy type colour in the foreground yesterday and I also completed most of the background. So anyway, eventually she obeys me and gets the... Hi Peter, how are you? Family dynamics, yes Jenny, you'll absolutely get this. So uh, I had to say... Right, Mum, on your screen, and she's interrupting me already. I say, Mum, you'll, if you find, just look for something blue that's got an upside down V. The app store. Amazingly, she got it. Uh, and I, you know, touch it, touch it gently, don't thump it. Because I don't know about your mother's or whatever, but on her phone and her iPad, I mean, she is a pianist, so she, you'd think she'd have a fairly gentle touch, but she likes to sort of do a bit of a Beethoven on her iPad and she sort of goes like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I say, look, mum, it's not like a, an old fashioned typewriter. You just need to touch it. Anyway, so unbelievably, we got Zoom app downloaded and I took her through like touching it, opening it, da di da di da And I said, so tonight, all you'll need is the ID and the passcode. And um, okay, so I said, right, what time's the meeting? Five o'clock. So I said, right, get ready at half past four. Jimmy Scott. Hi, Jimmy. This is Masterclass and Multiclass. Is very, 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 thank you, Charles McGowan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So she says, um, I'm, I'm going to do that strange thing that I mentioned the other day that I like to do, which is just to have a colour kind of literally jump out that isn't even part of the painting. And that's what I'm doing now. So we've got the Zoom thing and everything. And she, I said, yeah, what time does the class start? So this is, I'm putting this ridiculously unnatural, poppy, crazy pink on, just because I can. And um, it's like something that I just started doing recently and I absolutely love it. It's just like a visual glass of very nice wine. Anyway, so five o'clock's the meeting. Right, I said, hop us four, get your iPad and um, go to a room that my brother John is not in. Because I said, I absolutely and ut utterly refuse to have a conversation with you on a phone where he's bellowing in the background and you're telling him to shut up. I said, that's not going to happen. I'll just put the phone down if you do that. Because that is what they do. And um, So anyway, sorry to drone on, but that's... That just took so, so long. And by the end of that phone conversation, my eyes were sort of popping and feeling like I had a migraine coming on. I know this is quite a boring painting, but I quite like doing these this final thing, which is, it's a bit like a visual joke. That's what it is. I can't think of any other reason why anyone would put this bright, bright pink in these tiny little spaces, but it just, for me, it quite works. So I'm expecting a phone call at about half past four. Marianne, what did you, what did you say to do? And I totally understand it's difficult because, you know, I wasn't brought up with all these iPads and iPhones and everything, but I've absolutely had to get to, get to grips with it. But my poor old mum, you know, she is an old dog and these are new tricks. Uh, I'm going to just darken, put a bit of um, form to the legs. That colour. Not that brush and not that colour. I'm just going to get a little bit of blue. Now then... Um, possibly a bit more than I intended and I don't usually do this I never really take paint away but you distracted me you, you people you can quickly get a bit of tissue paper as I did then if you just quickly make a Stop saying boring, we like it. Will your mum run live piano <laughs> classes? Because your painting is not a... 
Would you like me to press the finish button? Oh, damn, who is that? Uh, my mother doesn't run live painting classes, but my daughter, Annie, who is very, very good. Annie Ball, she's called. She does do... She does do online piano teaching and she is superb. Went on your YouTube and the category is described as comedy. That's not very good. Somebody leading a Zoom room told me to copy and paste the link. I kept getting Sainsbury shopping list with bananas. <laughs> That's really funny. If that is my mother there now. Ah. Oh. I don't care. The landline hardly ever rings these days. I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on the white ring around the pheasant's neck because it makes it look like it's really there. That's enough of that. Chuck it over there. Okay. I'm going to try and do some of the eyes on these. I love the poppy pink on your hair. Pick. Thank you, John. Sc John Scott. Is there no farming to be done? Shouldn't you be like running around after a cow or, or a sheep or plunging your hand up something? Does she watch this? You could be, no, she wouldn't know how to. She says, I don't want to do any of that stuff. Stop saying boring, I like it. Daddy, I love the family stuff. Not boring, right, eyes. Now then, can you see? Right, we'll do, we'll start on, uh, I don't know where to start. I'm really quite liking this painting. I'm liking, I'm liking the composition now, and I like the fact that um, it's at a point where I'm fairly comfortable to progress. Now, I did want to say something the other day. I'm going to tip you up because this is very important. Is your poor mum? She's not a poor mum. She's an old bag. It's not a ski badge. See that badge there? Scales of justice. Mary Ann Ray, you of all people should recognise the scales of justice. Thank you very much, Margaret Wood. It says, Legal Challenge Appeal 2005. I've got absolutely no idea how I got it. Maybe I was, like, in a campaign or something. Right, so I'm, I'm looking for a darker... Oh, sorry, tip you up. I'm, I'm looking for a, a darker red and I'll do it, do it to all of them and then I will go to the next stage. <gasps> so much paint going on here. I don't want to make a... That brush isn't really good. I'm going to get a... This one's... It's a small brush. It's a small, horrible brush, actually. We've got quite a few gentlemen with us this morning, I see. Well, it's not morning anymore, is it? Chickens actually have quite small eyes. We've got some baby chickens going on. We're, two, we're, we're sort of at the point where I think they're about maybe two weeks old. They've been in the horse trailer, which is uh, like keeps them safe. Uh, for a couple of weeks and we need to we need to bite the bullet and put them outside so that they can begin to become acquainted with other things like leaves and um, guinea fowl ducks the killer duck is still behaving in a very aggressive way uh, the dogs are absolutely terrified of it. Sorry, my arm's sort of over the way for that one. Uh, I'll just do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to have to put them out. And um, what we usually do is we've got some pen sections, which probably won't mean anything to anyone who isn't a gamekeeper out there, but we've got some set, like pen sections, put them together and create a sort of safe area for them to, for their next stage. But like all the chickens and the ducks and the guinea fowl here, they all end up 
as Fox Snacks, which is just devastating, but that is the way. It's a bit like our vegetable garden. You know, it doesn't matter what you plant, something's gonna wanna eat it before we get there. Um, I would quite like that red paint I've just put on to go completely dry, or as we like to say, bone dry. So I'm gonna do a tiny little bit to the beaks. I will do some sort of, some more, I, I've got another idea for after this as well. Uh, do I like this brush? Is it thin enough? Yeah, I'd say so. Already the peas that we grew from seed in the greenhouse and they were all like really lovely and ready to plant out. We planted them out, we surrounded them with um, we surrounded them with uh, what we call brash, which is like pine tree. Do you see I'm just tilt a little bit so I've done I've just divided the top and the bottom bit of the beaks on these. And now I'll do the uh, the orange outer bit. Can you see? I'm just going to tip you up so I can read what you're saying. The fox had three hands from me. This driving mad. Hello, Celia. Keep them away from your horses too. I saw a video of a horse eating a chick. Oh, that's horrible, William. I, I didn't need to know that horses ate chickens. That's that's dreadful. I think you're watching too many dodgy videos, personally. God, eating a chick. Just test, test my orange. Not really liking that very much. I'm just finding, a, you don't need very much for this job, obviously, but I do want it to be, I want it to be a good, not a muddy, not a muddy colour at all. I'll just use that, because I can always go darker, but I can't really very easily go lighter. Chickens have um, beady little eyes. Orange bit round the edge, black in the middle. <gasps> Sorry about this, Mary Ann Ray, but I'm going to tell them the otter story. We live um, about half a mile, quarter mile, half a mile from the River Reed, which, you know, that's a fair way. I can hear my... F oh, there it is. Something appeared... Oh, somebody sent me a message. Yeah, we, we've got, um, can you see where I'm at? I'll just move it over so you can see this one. Oh, where's my paint? We had, uh, we always like Indian runner ducks and so we kept the ducks on a tiny little stream just quite near the house and uh, lock them up at night time. And um, one night, Fifey went out to lock the ducks up and came back looking like dishevelled and obviously itching to tell me a tale. And what had happened, he'd gone down to lock the ducks up and he encountered an otter with one of our Indian runner ducks in his mouth and um, it was it was you know it was gonna have it now then what I do at this stage might seem odd but I want the d darker color I want there to be depth of color in the top part of their eye so if I turn it upside down if it's still wet 
it won't bleed down. Can you see? The, 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 this, this darker bit of colour will stay on the top half if I use gravity to help me. So anyway, he was absolutely astonished. He couldn't, he just couldn't believe his eyes that there was an otter, considering how you know, rare they are. Um, in practically what is our garden, trying to kill one of our ducks. So, you know, naturally his protective instinct got the better of him and he shouted at it and it wasn't having, it wasn't in the least intimidated. And, and sort of went like, rah, rah, go away, go away, leave our ducks alone. And um, wasn't interested, it was making off with the duck. And Fifey wasn't having that, so he grabbed a stick and um, hit the otter several times on its back to try and get it to drop the duck. And it was a, bit, a big rotten clump of stick and it broke, uh, and the otter didn't. And anyway, in the end it gave up and it sort of turned around and went ah, and ran away and it's never happened again. But, and the duck survived. It had sort of bitten the parson's nose off. It had sort of, you know, the turned up bit with the curly tail on. It had bitten it off and it was, it was never like great, but Indian runner ducks look very odd anyway. So, um, uh, you to April, isn't Marianne, isn't Marianne, lo isn't Marianne lovely? <laughs> Ten minute warning. Shoot, thank you. They breed a different sort of horse over there. Hello, Beth. Take care and be safe. Charlotte, hi. I saw that too. Soon a horse pick a sheep up. Um, right, I'm going to move this to one side because this has all been a bit unexciting. Somebody asked me about about, uh, no, I'll tip you up, about washers. And I think the sort of meaning that I, what, I, what I have done is I've begun a few landscapes like this. This is just the beginning. And what this is, is beginning to get like color, fluidity, a sense of what that time and place was. And, I've, and uh, on this painting, there have been two main washers, a background, pouring of colour almost onto the paper and then just putting colour, letting the colour bleed through the paper. So we've got, uh, if we look in the background, we've got this colour here and we've got some yellows and greens and things. And then the next stage, I got a big wide brush and uh, started laying down like the shapes of the hills and the layers of the field. And broadly speaking, there is a river here and then there are two, what we call in by flat fields. Uh, and I don't really want to do, to do anything to that right now, mainly because I'm not feeling it. I've got to, I've got to kind of, for something like this, I want to feel what it was. Um, and I've got another one here, which is the same idea, but it's looking up onto this hill here. I will start one. Uh, and the thing that was the most important was this dark, dark, purpley grey sky and then just dropping down through the fields and the walls and again I don't really want to crack on with this right now because I, I might I don't know maybe I'll show you again how I sort of lay down it's like laying down the groundwork for quite a quite a wild type of landscape and then I'll show you this one. This was like, see that? That was like a test colour last night. And as I was chatting to a very good friend of mine, um, I just kind of made it, made them into trees and made it into a landscape and a sky. And it was quite good fun. It's good to play with colour. So um, I am going to do the same sort of thing here. I might be able to do it without tipping you down. If I just tip that way a touch and I get a bit of board. And a bulldog clip is always good. Lots and lots of boards. I'm going to try to tip it sideways. And then you can actually see 
the place up there that I was painting. So if I was going to uh, attempt to, to lay the groundwork for like a really typical landscape round here, I would normally have completely clean brush, but I haven't. But I think that if you have a go at something like this, you'll find it really, really good fun. Um, yeah, just hoping you can see. I'll do my mixing just right in front of me on my on my painting board. So it's not going to be a massive lot of different colours either. Again, as most of you know, I have a palette of five colours, really. Payne's Grey, Sap Green, Windsor Yellow, Yellow, I think it's Windsor Red, Alizarin Crimson or something similar. There's one that starts with a Q, which is the one I use, this one here. Um, and a French Ultramarine, which is the blue that I use. And for my work, I don't really need much else. I, my my uh, palette does not really include does not really include um, sepias and things. Has five few red Tarka the otter? We most certainly have. Otters aren't as rare. You're right, Emma. We've seen quite a few. <gasps> Eating all Mrs. Packard's cob. I know someone who has trouble with otters. As well, not far from you, Jenny. So, I'm sort of, oh, you see, this is magic. I absolutely adore this sort of stuff that goes on. Mmm, oh, dearie me, it's going all the way through. I'm going to just take that away. And to show you that you can be really quite brave with the colour. And I'm tipping it. Maybe leave it sideways for a bit. Now then, round here, the far horizon is nearly always either blue or a sort of purpley, purpley bluish. And I'm just thinking, for this to be the start, I could, I could begin by doing something like that. And when you do these very, very experimental sort of things with water and, and pigment, it's a good idea to actually watch and see what happens in these small, intimate areas. And if you, like me, think that is absolutely gorgeous, then include it in your painting. And then we come a bit closer to the foreground and I might start thinking about, I don't know, greens and blues maybe. It's all a bit muddy, but it doesn't really matter. It is going to go be lighter when... Um, I'm now just going to use the colours that are in my palette, which are really are quite a mess. And if you come back, it won't be tomorrow. No live video tomorrow. I have things to do the next day. Then... We'll move on from this. Oh, God, it's gorgeous. I just... See, to me, that is a really good start to a landscape painting. One of the ones for round here. So, um, I hope that makes you think, mmm, that's a bit of a big old mess. But this can be brought together. And the colours that have been started in here can form the... Um, can form the basis to something that'll be much more sort of recognisable once the, like, the layers and the fields are brought in. Hello, John. Hello, Anne. I like to feel it too. I want to feel... I like to feel it, feel it. Uh, we've got the miles out on the hill, living in shell holes, living on frogs and lambs. In your waters. Oh, yes, please. Love the landscape to be um, Marianne, looks a little like my dear friend Sylvia May. Why are you shouting, April Ash, Ash, Ashley? Jules, I haven't felt it for an hour. Um, you and your bulldogs. Bulldogs. Five colours, interesting. Hi, Stephen, how are you? Much more in the style of the... I'm not sure Grace, Grace and Perry would do that. Grace and Perry, he just steals all my ideas. 
because I've told you. But as I said, I regret even suggesting live videos to him and lockdown gangs and stuff. Just stole everything. Lovely colour range. Thank you, Heather. I can rely on you to say something nice and something sensible. Right, I'm going to sign out. If you are not already a member of our lovely group, Lockdown Gang, do go like this in your Facebook, Lockdown Gang. And then I think if you've already got a friend in, you can just join, I think. Otherwise, I might get a, uh, a thing that says, can this person join? And I just go, yes, of course. If they're nice, if they're going to say something nice, oops. Um, ideally, put your paintings on there. And there are some people who are really, really good and experienced. They've been at it for years. And there are some people who are just trying watercolour out. Uh, and um, so please don't feel shy. And if you do feel shy, message it to me and I'll stick it up there. And you can just bask in the adulation and then you can put your name on it. Um, isn't what Trump suggests for a COVID-19? God, he's terrible. Do not know how you cope with that man. Right, I'm going to say goodbye. No live video tomorrow, Tuesday, but I'll be back on Wednesday. Okay, have a great day. Bye.